the crew. I mean, hmm. Hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but uh, you know, we do want to touch base. We're, we're just over, I believe, a week away from uh, Lucha Underground Season 2 as of this recording. Uh, yep. uh, or actually probably even less so uh, uh, as we as we cross uh, the time zones for some of us here. Uh, but, uh, uh, I, you know, what, you know, you, you're obviously well into, you have uh, episodes in the can, probably a, a good number of them at this point. Um, yep. what you know, we've seen the previews, we got Matt Stryker catching us up on, on, on Lucha Underground, uh, videos yep. popping around Facebook and everything. Um, how are you feeling? How, how are things going? Just generally, how are things going with the production? How's it feel to be back at it full on? Um, cause I think we were just, you were just a day in on production when we were talking to you last. Yeah. Uh, it's the production has been crazy. Uh, the schedule has been crazy. Um, Getting everything done has been crazy, and this weekend is our last weekend of tapings for season two. So, uh, or not this weekend, the the thirty first, thirtieth, then thirty first. So, um, we are pretty excited uh, to be done, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit of, of a bittersweet feeling. But uh, it'll be nice to have a little bit of a break, and who knows, uh, season three might be rolling shortly thereafter. We mm-hmm. we, we don't know yet, but. Uh, yeah. That will be a good thing too. So, um, not a, a shortage of, of work to do on Lucha Underground. I will tell you, there is definitely some awesome wrestling uh, this season for sure. Um, and uh, I think I think the storylines are pretty good. I mean, if I had to say it myself, I hate. I, gosh, I hate to put, put myself in this situation. It's always nerve wracking, like a second season. Like, is it ever going to live up to? The hyper people are like, well, it's not as good as the first one, you know. Like, uh, it's kind of tough to 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 do the sequel, but I think we tried our best, and I think we got we we uh, we got pretty good at what we did last year, and and we we roll right into it, and hopefully don't don't have too many missteps. Mm -hmm. You know, the scary part is, um, I I always hear as far as like at least drama shows, in which I I feel like you guys are very much kind of in league with that, with the way you guys do your show. Um, um, things don't really start hitting their stride until season three. I hear uh which if if this isn't your stride oh my god <laughs> yeah so we're, we're hoping that this one that this one's good we, I, you've seen the trailer so i'm sure you guys have seen there's some there's some strange stuff going on but uh that's what we try to do we try to push the envelope a little bit and do stuff that uh that other places won't mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i know i know gotta throw it against the wall and see if it sticks you know mm-hmm. you never know and i know well it was speaking of that trailer i think it was the first season two trailer that popped up uh matt carlin's here did a step-by-step force awakens style <laughs> breakdown of that said trailer and asked I all the it. you <laughs> i watched that yeah <laughs> he broke it down he tore it apart and and, and matt i don't know if you want to poke at that a little bit get some clarifications on anything that you possibly can at this point let me, let me go check my old notes. What, what, let me go check and see what unanswered questions I had left here okay. that uh, I had to uh, had to ask Chris that uh, I might have neglected to mention whenever we were uh, watching. Chris, let me ask you one thing real, real quick because this keeps popping <laughs> into my head. Okay. Um, more or less backstage stuff in season two as compared to season one. Yes or no? Um, there'll probably be a little bit more in the first half and then it'll, uh, you know, cause we're trying to tell a bit more stuff about background of characters and things like that. So you'll see a little bit more in the first half of the season and then it'll probably get a little bit closer to normal Lucha Underground through the, the last half. But there is some, uh, there is some backstage stuff. Some stuff doesn't even take place in the temple. So there's lots of stuff this season that doesn't take place, uh, in Boyle Heights. That's a, that, that that's actually a surprise because well, really the majority of everything in, in season one happened like within the confines of the building, right? Correct. So I mean, I like like is <laughs> I, I have used this in some other cases. This, this feels like the, the the follow that bird where like we actually get to see a uh, big bird outside of Sesame Street. I know that is the weirdest con you know with Lucha Underground I could probably take, but it, it is is it, how exciting was that to get them kind of out of that those confines? Uh, that, that was fun. It was, it, it allowed us a little bit of creative freedom and to do some kind of neat things that we hadn't done before. And, uh, and, and that, that, that made it uh, a lot of fun and, and uh, even more challenging. Like sometimes you don't want to stay in that, that temple all day. It smells like cat pee and, and <laughs> violence. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, it, it was nice to get out and get some fresh air. Violence with cats. Um, yeah, you know that kind we, of thing. There's lots of cats that live in the temple. Mm-hmm. Tons of them. It's crazy. Well, I mean, yeah, you got Bengala. You got- yes, <laughs> Bengala. <laughs> Mittens. The mighty Bengala. The mighty Bengala. <laughs> I always forget. I apologize, Matt. That's awesome. Yes, from uh, the jungle. Uh, Garza, uh, we have anything you want to you want to poke at Chris here about season two? <laughs> uh, uh, no, uh, uh, he was saying that there's always a chance that season two is uh, like the the dangerous one. But uh, at least for myself, uh, that I already saw the the trailer for the like the second trailer that came out, and I saw that one second of Pentagon Jr. and Mil Marcus together in the ring and I'm already pre-ordering the season two DVD box set. Oh. Special edition. Yeah, because like I'm already sold just just knowing that those two will clash. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They will. Uh, you know, that's an interesting <laughs> thing. So we talk about um I, I don't know if we talked about this when we talked when, when we had you on Indie Mayhem show. Um but there's something that we always compare like or I do at least, like, you know, Impact Wrestling versus WWE or anybody else versus WWE. It depends on, like, no matter, like, let's take Sting, for instance. Sting's been doing all this stuff with TNA for how many years, but nothing feels important until he pops up on WWE, right? And the way they present things. And and it feels like, you know, like that reaction Garza gives you. Like, you, you've made things important in an interesting way where a lot of, smaller wrestling groups and you are like it's it's a smaller operation in, in, in uh um can i say scale does that make sense obviously production. significantly <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. yeah i mean i mean what you know obviously you know there's the the narrative that we we talked about before that you guys do differently um you know it, it, you know what is that intangible thing that kind of gives it more atmosphere and weight you know like a wwe seems to be really good at you know, it's funny. I was talking to Johnny Mundo today about it, and 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 <laughs> you know, part of it is like we don't give up on storylines necessarily. Like we we follow through and mm-hmm. we do it. Where in the WWE, you could introduce a character, and he's that way for the first five weeks or until like Vince changes his mind or somebody else has something to say, and the storyline just always being changed and tweaked and modified rather than okay, this is our plan. Let's try to stay as close to the course as possible and, and make the payoff work, create the arc of the story and then pay it off. So it's not kind of like fly by night stuff. And I think that that kind of has helped the audience be like, Oh, okay. Now I start to care. I care about these characters. Um, you know, I think we also told, you know, every character has a little bit, something special about them. So you can find multiple characters that you can get behind or like, um, I think that helps too uh, to have a roster where not every week you you know the main event could be your favorite guy or it could be somebody that you don't like that week. I, you know it's 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 a nice it's nice to be able to move the pieces around and and use people in at, at any point in the show. Mm-hmm. You know, Guys, I think uh, I think Chris is hinting that we'll get to see uh, the slam song of El Mariachi Loco on season two, guys. So <laughs> about time. Hey, uh, Chris, to the ring. I, I just wanted – Bobby's asking a question in the chat room. Oh, um, all right. Is anyone else no, going to die? It, it, will there be more murder in season two, basically, is what he's asking. And that goes back to one of the unanswered questions from the first trailer where we saw him. I, I'm going to assume it's kill shot, but he's in camouflage, and he appears to be judo tossing and shooting everyone. So uh, Yeah, so then, yes, you will see more people die in season <laughs> uh, two. You know, <laughs> will, will anyone is anyone going to find what's left of Bale in season two? Um, the, there, Bale will be brought up in season two. He, he will, he oh, will be brought up. Oh, oh, please, please be a ghost. Please be a ghost. <laughs> please, be a ghost. <laughs> please, please. I'm praying to the Lucha Gods. No spoilers, Mike. Man. I'm not. I, I, I do not want friends. Don't let friends spoil Lucha Underground. That's right. That's why it's right there. Uh, wow. I, I, I do have a question though. Um, his, his brother Dale shows up looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does Dale have an evil, an evil mustache? He's missing a tooth too. <laughs> he's got a Lucha, he's got a luchador mask with a mustache on it. Like, have you seen Bale? He's an accountant. <laughs> 
That'd be amazing. Oh my God. He, like he never showed up for dinner after one night at the temple. We've been really worried about him. <laughs> There's signs all over the place. Have you seen my brother? Oh, my <laughs> um, I did have a question though. When you're um, do, filming the matches and all that stuff, yeah. have you do you film like the interstitials around the same time, or like all the backstage stuff, or the, or is um, that this, done earlier? I mean, like this year we did a lot of stuff in advance for for to save money and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. and get a lot of it. Like I we shot the a big scene for the finale uh, for Ultima Lucha. We shot that. Uh, gosh. Like at the very beginning. So, um, you know, you got to cr- cross your fingers and hope that things don't change too much or somebody doesn't get horribly injured or things like that because that can have an effect on it. But we rolled the dice and, and did some things in advance. Um, yeah, those things aren't shot the days of the matches. We just we, – the scripts are written. Uh, all those pieces are there. And then we kind of follow along with it. I mean sometimes we shoot things completely out of order. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the people who are there watching the show have no idea really. So – Okay, yeah, I was just curious, like, how much, like, the guys knew about the Rim Ring story when they're in there. Like, Some at do. One, at, one, at one point they are, you know. Some do, but, like, even uh, I have – I tell you, like, lots of times the talent come to me and they're like, ah, they're kind of confused as to what's going on because they don't see everybody else's parts and what everybody else is doing and how the whole puzzle fits together. So it's like I have the puzzle in my head and I know how it all comes together. So – um, they don't get to see that. So sometimes it's, it's fun to do it mm-hmm. that way too. Uh, and, um, but other times, sometimes they're like, Hey, so what the heck is happening to this character? So, uh, <laughs> you know, you try to give them a little bit of context as, as to what's going on. But right. in, in some, in some cases, like I don't like to tell, especially when they're acting the parts to tell them everything because sometimes they wouldn't really know. Right. Right. Yeah, Cause I, I've heard that done on like a lot of like serialized TV and stuff like that, where they don't know what's happening to their character until they get the pages for that day. That's mm-hmm. pretty much what we do. So. Okay. okay. I mean, I, obviously sometimes I'll, I'll talk to people about, about a program and, and like, you know, how we're going to, what we're going to do with them for the season, whether it's, you know, Johnny or, 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 uh, or other, uh, guys on the show. So yeah. I just thinking of Johnny. I just we just we just went to Sports Center. We just did Sports Center with uh, Lucha Underground today. So that was uh, all right. he was there. With me. Yeah, was, and, and Matt, uh, to answer your question, I got the pictures up. If you if you want to touch base on that, yeah, I want to ask you about this because we did see um, uh, Melissa Santos, and I think she was sending out some uh, pictures of her with uh, Stan Verrett from Sports yeah. Center. You can see Johnny Moon in the background. What the heck is going on? Are they going to get like a little segment? What's going? Is it just oh, like, yeah. hey, how you doing? Are we, get, are we getting a Trenta by Trenta? We're going to be doing a, we're doing a, a, either, I think it's either on, uh, I don't know when this comes out, but it'll be on ne- next Monday or Tuesday. They're going to, uh, Sports Center will be like Lucha Underground Sports Center, the late one oh, from wow. Los Angeles. That's awesome. That's amazing. So, yeah, like, it, was, you, it was really cool. Uh, do you sense like the hype machine and is a little bit more behind you this time? Yeah, I think, I think it's like, uh, the, the word about the show is leaking out there and people are finding out about it. And um, I think it'll become more available in not only the United States, but other places shortly. And, uh, you know, might become more available for, for everybody in this country too. Good. So, um, you know, hopefully it keeps the momentum keeps building, but you can, you can get a sense that even in LA, like, People know about it, and people like wonder how do they get a secret ticket to come into the Lucha Underground <laughs> Temple. Uh, so you know that if there's a vibe like that, I don't know for some reason it just it feels cool and feels like you know kind of a, a cool thing to do right now. So that's a good thing, a good problem to have, I think. It's nice and exclusive. I, I, I want to also I want to mention because I, I was kind of, I'm a core cutter, so and I, I vowed I'm going to keep up with Lucha Underground. I was kind of like watch these guys, and like I said, kind of vicariously. Uh, uh, got through the excitement with them and, 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 and caught up a little bit myself. Um, but uh, for the cord cutters even, uh, or if it's not in your area, Sling TV actually carries El Rey Network, I think in the basic package right now. Um, so, I mean, it's 20 bucks a month to do something like that, but that's pretty accessible everywhere, at least in the United States. So if anybody looking for uh, good, legit options to catch the show, um, that's that's definitely one to look into. So. Um, and just one yeah. more question to piggyback on just the availability. Sure. And I know we ask you this like every single time, but like Netflix, DVD, or either of those things in the works? DVD especially. Uh, well, there's lots of things in the works and as far as like networks and stuff like that, I 
can't really get into it, but I do think that it will become available for purchase at some point. Good, so, yes. good, good. <laughs> um, I, 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 I forgive myself for being a meme, but shut up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will literally just throw dollars at you for me to own Lucha Underground Season 1. So. I'll throw pesos. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, yeah, hopefully there'll be like more, uh, more, more other things, merchandise. Like we got a, got a Puma mask. Oh, we got a Puma mask coming. Oh yeah. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, we got it all. That's good. I mean, it was, it was hard to find merch last year. It was, it was. Yeah, hopefully they're yeah, starting to get to, to get the ball rolling a little bit more. I'm still pushing for more character specific stuff, but mm-hmm. yeah, you know, can't have everything. I- I need a Marty <laughs> shirt in my life. I, I know everybody needs a yellow Aztec pride shirt. Come on. <laughs> I mean, that's the one I've been pushing the most for. I'm like, I think a lot of people would buy that. But I feel like action figures would be good too. And you can have like totally. you know, Dario's truck and the trailer and everything. A little play set thing going on. Yep, your own jail right cell. There, yeah. yeah. All, all sorts of different stuff. It's all ready to go. The jail cell play set with, a, with, with, with dead bail. <laughs> yeah, like a little, little jar of blood that you put in there, like squirts, you know. or my little matanza, like just a yeah. giant. <laughs> I love that you can dress him, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I gotta get the girl something, you know. <laughs> oh jeez. Um, I I can't believe we have gone this far. We haven't mentioned uh, Ray Mysterio's name one time. Are you are you ready to tell us anything about Ray Mysterio? Yeah, Ray, he's Ray up to. Ray Mysterio is in Lucha Underground, and uh, he's up to uh, tying into the storyline. And, and uh, <laughs> there was a giant question mark that was put on a billboard at the end of last year. And uh, I would think uh, Ray Mysterio has often used a question mark as a symbol of, for himself. So, so, um, so we, we speculated at the end of the first season that that may have been like a bad signal for Ray Mysterio. Is that basically what we're seeing a little bit? Yeah, I, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, that's the way I envisioned it. And at the same time, it was like a question mark of like, hey, we don't know if this show's going to get picked up or not, so let's just put it up there too. <laughs> that's double meaning. Well, at least we finally answered the question of who's that jumping out the sky. So, yes. <laughs> so what has been your favorite part that you've shot of season two so far that you can even hint at? Oh gosh, uh, my favorite part of season two that I've shot. Um, I mean, I guess uh, there's a few. I mean, the uh, you know kill shot uh, thing was pretty fun. Um, God, uh, there is uh, there's a backstory scene with Dario Cueto that's emotional and awesome and. Uh, uh, I will say, then uh, going into the to Marty's house, Marty the Mouse house is oh, no. uh, pretty pretty cool. That's one of my favorites. Are there just <laughs> light bulbs? <laughs> are there light bulbs that are just swinging back and forth? All the time? Uh, he he lives in a nice house, so uh, you'll, you'll see. he lives in the suburbs, uh, doesn't he? He just he just. <laughs> He dresses nice and say you'll you'll get a kick out of it. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Yeah, Mar- yeah Marty the Mall stepped up his game this year. Dude. <laughs> That's amazing. He's a total psychopath. <laughs> um, who else? Um, who else? Is, this? <laughs> <laughs> is it next Wednesday already? Can we just fast yeah. forward? <laughs> is there is there an early preview somewhere along the line we can pick up or? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the first five, the first, uh, the first five shows so far. So there, and I, I really like them all. I really think they're good. So hopefully you guys do too. That's great. Um, oh. How many episodes are we getting in season two? Uh, twenty-seven hours, twenty-six episodes. Oh, oh wow. Awesome. Okay. And, and, and so and, Ultima Lucha is it going to be a two-hour block this time? Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, yeah, you know what? Well, I'm on, I'll just give an exclusive here. Ultima Lucha will be four total hours, three total episodes. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that, it's it's cool. Wow. Oh, and, 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 and most of these are in the can at this point, too. That's incredible. 
yeah, we've all we have left is basically Ultima Lucha, and we're, we shoot that in two weekends. So. Wow. Uh, God. What we're is there. it? And, and, we're there already. From the first season, and, and again, you, you know you're sitting on incredible matches uh, and all that kind of thing. What is it like to like kind of have to sit on knowing this is a great match nobody's going to see for what have we at like 20 weeks from now or something like that. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like, uh, even when we shot, I'm like, God, I'm not going to probably get to see this match again until for a few months. It'll yeah. Just, I'm then, it's kind of cool for me too, because to go back once, once the editor starts sending me cuts and give notes and, to like, to like look and, and watch those matches again. And like, Oh my God, I forgot how crazy that was. Or I forgot how, 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 how much I enjoyed that. Or, you know, Oh, I wish we didn't, I wish we could fix that, <laughs> um, but uh, it's yeah, it's it, it's it's a little bit crazy to do that, and especially this time. At least last time when we did it, we had a we had uh, a window where like people would watch the show, and then we could get a little bit of feedback from the audience, and then if we needed to make any changes, we could. This time, I mean, the first episode will air, and then we'll shoot the finale. So wow. <laughs> that's really all we're gonna get is if the first episode. <laughs> if, if everybody starts. Uh, starts throwing out their televisions and, and you know, computers, <laughs> however else they're stealing it. There's yeah, no everybody movement. stops stealing Lucha Underground. No, nope. we know we're in big trouble. Yeah, yeah. Now, no, now that no you mentioned that, uh, has there ever been talk about releasing some of the director's cut version of some of the season one matches? Because I understand that, for instance, Pentagon Jr. versus Vampiro was like a 30 minute destruction. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think it was 26 minutes and I. I was very angry that night because that wasn't supposed to happen. But in a way, it <laughs> helped tell the story. But, um, you know, when you're in charge of producing the show and you're counting on somebody to hit their time and they go well, that far over, it's uh, it can be frustrating. But, um, yeah, I don't know. You know, the thing is, is like to do that, that's, it costs money to have somebody edit that. And editors are not cheap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, it's a good job to have out here. Um, is so that, I, that, I don't know, maybe eventually, but I mean, at this point, uh, you know, not, I wouldn't count on anything within the next six months like that to happen. Um, so I, for, um, season one, we basically had the whole black Lotus story that never even crossed over into the ring. Mm-hmm. Are we going to have anything like that again, where it's all just backstage stuff like it's like it's something that may be uh tying in for a possible season three or just like something that's going on backstage or is everyone that we see in the backstage segments eventually gonna be in the ring uh no they're not everybody who you see in the backstage segments are gonna be in the ring we even have characters that aren't wrestlers on this season so um it's uh that uh yeah there will be stories that take place outside and that that do not end up in the ring this season i mean some some things i will say like that we're trying to plant seeds for like season four or season five and we're just trying to plant them now so i mean we'll see we'll see what happens all righty <laughs> but yes there there are yeah there are other characters that are non-wrestlers in season two besides dario cueto awesome. excellent <laughs> I'm trying to think about what season four and season five are going to look like now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to think about it too. So oh, good. Yeah. We should, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's guys, going to be a zombie. If you Everyone. guys have any suggestions, please. Yeah. Everyone will be dead by that. Well, point. let's see. Let's and, see. There's, uh, there's, there's the, the wacky races idea. There's a, uh, uh, we could do Lucha Underground in space. <laughs> Um, oh, Lucha Underground in space. I think if you just kind of like follow like a Power Rangers kind of template, you could be like, you know, you know, Lucha Underground in space, Lucha Underground with dinosaurs, Lucha Underground with, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'd be okay with like Lucha Underground Mexican Civil War. And, th- and then you bring back oh. like the five, oh. like the five, like the, the Lucha families, like the Cuetos and you got um, oh, the Dasekas, the, the, the Demon Juniors. Apparently, Rey Mysterio. I mean, some some <laughs> some of some of Lucha Underground doesn't necessarily even take place in 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 this time. So, oh no, uh, you know, you'll you'll see. Well, wait, 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 wait. Now, now I'm imagining. Can, can I can I spitball here? <laughs> now, I, now you got me I, going. If we want to splice Doctor Who and Lucha Underground. I'm totally cool. Well, with there's it. that. There's that. Yeah, but there's like a Lucha Tardis. 
Ooh. Yes. I mean, I try to I try to say to everybody like Lucha Underground. We try to just make it a mix of everything that we, you know, like crime, sci-fi, fantasy, anything we can. Just, so, so you went the star has a TARDIS. I wouldn't be surprised. You want time travel, but 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 how about this? Like I'm guess I'm feeling I'm feeling uh, uh flashback sequences, and we're in the temple, but it's old timey. Whatever that means for Mexican old timey. Like I know for everything else, it's like you know uh, handlebar mustaches and stuff. Uh, so this could be really educational. Um, you know, because we have like the old we have the old <laughs> time handlebar mustaches on lucha masks. Right, and we have like the old time wrestling up here in Ohio that I know you know Matt Cross is a part of, and Gregory Irons and a lot of those guys. And, and it's very kind of like they they do the video in black and white and everything. And I'm just kind of wrapping my head around what like a flashback old time wrestling in the <laughs> temple may look like at this point. <laughs> yeah, it could, could look crazy. So, I mean, uh, you'll, you'll see, you'll see what happens. I mean, I can't give away anymore. I mean, then you have to dress. You have the, to so then I you don't have... want to spoil it for everybody. Cause it, it's, 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 it's some out there shit. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> <for> <laughs> Or me- meanwhile, you can go and watch all the Santo and Blue Demon matches. I mean, movies where he's fighting werewolves and mummies and vampires. That's true. That, I mean, that that that's something we don't get here in in America. And and if we're really exposing this 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 uh, lucha Mexican wrestling thing, you know, via lucha underground. I mean, man, where are the werewolves at? So, <laughs> um, season five, I, I right? Will- I thought I saw might... something in the trailer that might hit the. Okay. <laughs> oh, so what? Dude, I'm, he, I'm saw, he, he saw a dare wolf. Yes, I saw yeah. a dare wolf. Oh. <laughs> I, I it was in the club. <laughs> with the, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, if the Blade movies have taught me anything, any supernatural creature can learn how to use nunchucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that that's true too that's true too all right anything else we want to touch base on lucha i mean it's it, 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 man how how much more can we get out of chris here tonight <laughs> we've gone too far we, we have yeah, so we much i honestly don't want to know much more i no. just want to take no. it in so well, oh. i say hard sell and, and let's get on to something else. well now I as do, it I is have one more question are, are there going to be any more in-ring luchadoras oh yeah okay oh yeah there'll be a lot is there like a division, or are they just going to be interspersed with the male the girls, like normal? Just like normal, girls fight okay. the guys, but girls will fight the girls too. Okay, I, I saw. But yes, there are. Somebody, I think it was Lance Storm or somebody, was tweeting that they watched the first episode of, of Lucha Underground, and yeah, I re- and he hated that Sexy Star got beat in the first match. Right, I read that, but but it's just one of those. That's not the point, you know, and, and that's like kind of how we think about other wrestling, you know. And and that leads to something, leads to something, leads to something. Like versus, you know, like you talk about WWE, something get dropped. So why did that thing happen? Well, wait till next week. Well, wait, next nothing happened next week because we decided not to go back there, right? You guys have a roadmap because you're 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 more compartmentalized than than that. You know that everything's done together. So you know it's kind of like let's see how he is after five episodes if he goes that far. Yeah, so. I was like, "Come on, Lance! Like, get in, just get into the story a little bit, and then come back, and you can you can call me an idiot again for doing that." Yeah, there you go, there you go. Now, I just want to say also about that. That was one of my favorite moments of the first season because it's like a slap in the face at the end of that first episode. Mm-hmm. That, like, just for me watching, like, woke me up, and I'm like, "Oh my god, what am I watching?" And kind of like it, it kind of propelled me to to keep watching and see everything else, you know. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And plus, if you if you have like someone be super duper strong right off the bat, then there's no redemption. Like, like some of the best thing about Lucha Underground was um, Son of Havoc lost a lot in the beginning, and by the end of by Ultra Lucha, he was like one of the biggest heralded heroes. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the that's a great arc. Like it was probably one of my favorite things about uh, Lucha Underground season one was just. Uh, team dysfunctrios. Oh, do they have a name finally? No, they no, can't okay. decide on it. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> that's great. Well, uh, thank thank you, Chris. If you don't mind, stick around. I I, I think we want to definitely pick your brain on some other uh, general wrestling, uh, but I think we'll, we'll certainly be uh, talking about lucha uh, here and there throughout the rest of the night. 
So cool. Um, but uh, anyway.